Welcome to the Engerati studio. We're located at European Utility Week. I'm Denise from Engerati. And with us today, we're privileged to have Simon from Fortum. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. How are you finding the conference so far? I mean, it's lovely to meet all the other utilities and the players and see where the industry is going. Right, OK. And um, tell me, what is Fortum actually doing here? What are you hoping to achieve this week? You know, we are interested to see where the industry and the discussion is going, and especially how, how, how the new energy is going, yeah. how the renewable sector and all this with renewable integration actually right. will, will materialize in the end of the day. Right. Let's see, we were talking earlier about um, renewables and 100% renewables. Do you think uh, from a company perspective that this is actually achievable um, within the European region? Definitely. I mean, we could tomorrow already make the whole energy system 100% renewable. Right. But right. of course, that would probably cost a lot of money because we would actually need to yeah. invest a lot in new generation and at the same time decommission a lot of existing generation right. prior end of lifetime and somebody needs to pay the bill. Yeah, and then yeah. of course renewables also cause a lot of challenges to the system mm. Mm. because the more renewables we build we also get problems with intermittency. Yeah. We have plenty of electricity when it's sun and, uh, sunny and it's windy but then we also have times when nobody's producing electricity. Yeah. Mm. And um, what, what do you think is the solution um, to, to this? So it obviously sounds like a really complex um, challenge that the European region has ahead of them. Um, how, how do you think that we're going to overcome this to be able to reach this 100% renewable? I think first we actually have to take one step backwards. Mm. So I think the goal that we are going towards a renewable energy system yeah. in medium and long term. That has to hold. Yeah. And there has to be a broad political consensus, not only nationally in various member states, but right. also on a European level, there needs to be a consensus on what is the direction. Yeah. Then I need, we actually need to rethink a lot of the tools. Mm. Because today when we are subsidizing a lot of renewables into the system, yeah. we are destroying the electricity market of the mm. rest. Mm. So a little bit, if I try to establish a coffee shop, and somebody's mm. on the other side of the street providing coffee for free for everybody who's walking by, in the end of the day, my commercial coffee shop will not yeah. run. Yeah. And that is actually what is happening for conventional yeah. generation today. Yeah. And we still need backup electricity, we still need security of supply at moments and times when it's not windy and it's not sunny. Mm. So I think actually we have to go backwards and think a, think a lot about how do we do energy and climate policies mm. in member states and a national level and could we do something more jointly together, actually raise it a level higher. Sounds like there needs to be a lot of um, integration bet between all the parties. Is, is that not happening at the moment, you know, between regulators, utilities, vendors? Do you think there needs to be more communication between these parties? I think it's actually something about uh, like energy politics on a national level. Mm. I think mm. the utilities and the players, we are international. We are yeah. investing where we think it is nationally attractive and where there is opportunities. Yeah. And we also take into account an energy system where energy is flow, fl flowing from one country to another one. Yeah. But then actually still a lot of our member states, mm. policymakers make decisions on a national level. Mm. And policymakers make decisions on a very short term. They have an election cycle of yes. four years and they need mm. to be re-elected mm. and then they need to promote something during mm. their period. Mm. And they don't into, take into account that it's a complex system and everything mm. is interlinked. Mm. So if we are very strongly subsidizing in, in at one, one place something, actually it leaks somewhere else. Yeah. And, yeah. and that means that actually we need to rethink the political targets and how to actually make the integration one step right. forward. Right. We definitely need much, much more integration when we go forward because everybody is more dependent on each other. Yeah. Some region has a lot of excessive sun or excessive wind, it needs to push it somewhere because otherwise it's, it's unused. Yes, yes. But then on the other hand, somebody needs to provide backup at another situation. Mm -hmm. So we need to be actually able to find, find the integration one step further. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, we're talking a little bit also about the flexibility um, of the system. Do you want to expand on that a bit? You're, you're going to be talking about it um, um, during the event, aren't you? Yes. Do you want to just expand a little bit on, on your thoughts? Flexibility is something that I'm passionate about because right. when we are going forward, we will have more renewables, more intermittency, there will be a lot of like excess at some times and then deficits at other times. And it happens very quickly. Yeah. We don't know a couple of hours before if the sun is shining or the wind is blowing sure. and we have like an issue with flexibility. Mm -hmm. We're already today seeing that actually intraday markets and regulated markets, the volatility is going up and down. Right. That could be something that also consumers could have a more value. Actually, consumers could be more active, start participating in electricity market and behave much more mm -hmm. like actively and also benefit of it than they do today. All right. But it actually goes again that our regulation in many member states are not allowing that. 
okay. they still sell electricity on regulated tariffs to consumers and they can't actually, yeah. even if I change my behavior, it doesn't matter my electricity bill. Mm -hmm. So it goes again that I think we are already pushing with a lot of renewables the energy system to something new, mm. but regulation is not following after. Mm. And that makes then challenges for us in the industry. And also if you want to provide new services to consumers, you can provide services, but they don't necessarily have a value. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was interesting for me, you were mentioning about um, sort of in incentivizing your you know, the customers and um, uh, you know, transparency, getting customers involved in, in saving energy. Do you think, how easy do you think that is currently? And obviously you were saying you know, regulation will make that easier, um, but do customers care really? Do, do you think they really care uh, you know, about saving energy? That depends on countries and places. Mm. In some places, yes, there's definitely a business case for a customer right. to save energy because energy is very expensive, mm. especially in many Southern European countries, the retail bills are very high. Yes. But for example, when I come from in the Nordics and yeah. Finland, mm. we have the cheapest retail price in whole Europe. Mm. And actually, even if we have smart meterings and consumers can, for every hour they actually pay, change the consumption behavior. Right. It actually doesn't be so much actually change the consumption behavior for the consumer because right. the monetary value I can get is actually not so big. But of course, there are consumers who then want to do it because of some other reason. It's yeah. my price for decarbonization or my price mm -hmm. to push more renewables to the system or something like that. Mm -hmm. So of course, I, th I don't think uh, like money itself is the only value. There are other drivers. Mm -hmm. But then we of course need to in a clever way incentivize consumers to be more active than today. Yes, of course. Yeah. And, and today, actually, I think in many places in Europe, we are too much protecting consumers. We are combining social politics and economics and energy politics together and we are afraid that the consumers will be exposed to a full market price and uh, full volatility. Yeah, yeah. And actually there are other tools. If we want to protect the vulnerable consumers in the society, we should mm -hmm. do social policy for that, not energy policy. Yeah, yeah. So I actually I think that in order to incentivize consumers to really be more active in many places, we need to liberalize the retail markets. Right. And right. that we are quite bad in, in several places okay. around the Europe. Interesting. Okay. Um, Utilities and smart cities, what should their role be and, and what opportunities can they look forward to? I definitely believe that I mean, the smart city and the local city is a part of the future mm. and utilities will play a role there and they need to play a more active role today. Mm. And of course we utilities, we need to reconsider what we are offering as services to consumers and we probably need to expand our service repertoire to the consumers so they get more benefits from the utility. Yeah. Because there are more we are seeing increasingly that there yeah, are societal problems, urbanization, mm. logistical problems, uh, waste problems. We see that transportation is arranging traffic, uh, traffic jams, uh, uh, like there's come a lot of pollution of that. So yeah. I believe actually a smart energy system in a city is a key to solving a lot of issues. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then that will be the future. But how that will actually go, how will those business models develop? that is very early to say because yeah. it's so much case specific how is every municipal arranging the various things who yeah. is doing what etc but definitely i believe that the utility model will be much broader than it's today right. in the future right uh, what challenges do you think utilities face um when they when they come up against um perhaps you know taking taking uh, smart cities and, and finding opportunities in that space do you think they're faced with some real challenges I think our largest challenge is that we are a conventionally capital intensive, right. slow moving animal. Utilities, right. they make long term investment, mm. long payback times and mm. it always takes, it, it's a slow moving animal. Mm. And then we are going towards a society where consumption behavior, societal requirements, technology is changing much, much more faster. Yeah. And then of course, how to adapt to that? That yeah. is the big trans yeah. transformation the utilities need to make in the future world. Right. And that of right. course then is a challenge for us, for each individual of us, to de develop our own business model to yeah. suit the future. And yeah. of course then we ask that policymakers are long term, so they don't change the policies every fourth yeah. year or the local municipal is changing the policy every fourth year. They set a target where they want to be and then right. we as a partner try to provide it. Right. Um, Bringing up startups and, and bringing in uh, new innovations within this space, you know, into the utility business, do you see that happening more and more, where utilities realise that they now need to bring in more innovators, uh, you know, in, in, into their space and into their strategies going forward? Is that happening? I think we all see that and we see the need. 
Yeah. And some of us is trying also to facilitate that. Yes. But again, the conventional utility world and how we are making our decisions and how our processes right. are working is not always hand in hand with the startups, which is much, much faster. Right. So I think actually a lot of startups are challenging us. Yeah. But yeah. probably, I mean, we need to be better actually in, in finding a common business model yeah. and common like win-win cases and develop mm. those further. Yeah. So I yeah. think it, it's a healthy development of the industry. Yeah, absolutely. Right, my last question to you. Uh, if you had to do sort of give us one takeaway from the from the European Utility Week, or if you had one recommendation for the for the industry, what what would it be? Good question. I, I would ask. I mean, I think we try to deliver a lot of good things, mm. and we try to answer a lot of societal problems. Yeah. But actually, what I'm asking for is better policies. Right. Businesses and companies, we can't deliver everything if we don't get like more consistent energy and climate policies than we have today. Yeah, absolutely. I'll agree with that. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy the rest of the uh, event and your presentation. And to our viewers, thank you so much for joining us. Um, please note that there are other videos and other interviews that um, will also be aired during the next three days. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very, very Thank much. You. Sorry, I spoke.